basically our target is uh, nodal in the isthmus and then um, nodal uh, on the left you know, uh, imperial pole and all the way up to the superior pole and as you see there's a carotid artery and uh, tubular vein and I think in this case uh, you can see the vagus nerve there but vagus nerve lead we move from as you see here from uh, lateral in a four clock position it's move into a little bit more medial when I scan a little bit downward so we should be a little bit careful not too close to the dead vagus nerve and so as you see here even vagus nerve in you know, the course is you know different you know uh, the location is different when it is bottom there in a uh, four o'clock it's more go up it would be uh, almost like a uh, uh, nine o'clock position so depending on the level and uh, location I, I think you should remind that uh, level of uh, vagus nerve you know, changes peritumoral vascularity is uh, uh, it's kind of another factor uh, which will affect your procedure so as you see here the isthmic nodule has uh, some uh, intratumoral you know, vascularity but it does not uh, occupy more than 50% of the nodule volume but pretty much uh, hypervascular if I move to her left uh, side of the nodule uh, sorry into the left side uh, this way uh, you can see also uh, intratumoral uh, vascularity mm. right, and then you can see the, the carotid artery and jugular vein uh, next to it for sating right. okay as for to easy you know synchronize the my needle uh, kind of movement and then ultrasound I like to change the right and left. Can you change the right and left, please? Yeah, because I'm working on the head side of the, the patient. So now you see the left side of the patient neck and thyroid on the left side of the screen. This is isthmus. The screen is totally reversed, you know, uh, in comparison with the previous one. This is ischemic portion. This is the patient left side. Yes. Oh. To protect the the recurrent uh, laryngeal nerve. Uh, the laryngeal, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is usually located uh, at the uh, espagio tracheal group, so there is no need to go close to the lateral imperial margin of the trachea, and I, I like to avoid that uh, danger. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm now getting the lidocaine. As you see, my needle between the subcutaneous fat and uh, thyroid nodule in the isthmus, but I think thread muscle is pretty much thinned out by the, the protruding ischemic nodule, and then I like to keep go usually go a little bit deeper into the just surface of thyroid nodule, and then I inject the lidocaine. You can see the the dissection of the lidocaine in, into the fascia, and uh, if you inject a little more, you can see the layer. Uh, that is actually a uh, pretty tricky in you know, the fascia around the thyroid nodule and thyroid gland and let me get more now you see the dissection of the lidocaine let me follow the edge there you can see now the, the needle tip by injecting lidocaine you will see more of the yes fluid there now I'm doing the perithyroidal the dissection with the lidocaine that's why I don't call it hydro dissection just perithyroidal uh, lidocaine injection it's kind of a uh, hydro dissection technique but this is to the uh, protect you know strain muscle burning uh, during the energy transmitted heat is transmitted and then Yes, I'm injecting more, and more, and more, holding that. All right. I uh, put the power on. Uh, sometimes you think that you are seeing the 
need a tip entirely, but only you just see the part of it. And then the most important thing is to see the real needle tip. So insulated portion is really echogenic. Sometimes uh, the uh, only tip and then the between the insulated uh, plastic portion and active tip, you cannot see it. So here we go. I think that my needle tip is right there. Make sure just sometimes you can move the needle a bit, little bit more back and forth. You can see that how it moves and make sure. Alright, so I don't want to go too close to back uh, side of the neck and it can cause a burning sensation of the uh, the neck uh, the, by the muscle in a posterior uh, compartment. Okay, so I think I'm ready. So can you uh, turn on the power? Yes, because it's a 1 cm uh, activity, I'd like to start with uh, 40. 40. Yes, sir. Yeah. What did you feel? Pain or nothing? No, no, a bit of pain, just to like hear the popping. Oh, popping, not the pain. Okay, no good. pain, no, no pain. pain. Good, okay. <laughs> good. Anytime, please let us know, okay? And I'll, I'll stop immediately. Okay, good. Let's go more, please. Sir. No, we are listening. <laughs> Still at 40. Yes, I'm good, thank you. 40. You depend on all, only micro bubbles. There's a chance you can pull the needle too early you know, before uh, the energy transmitted uh, to the adjacent, you know, the struck uh, part of the tissue. There's a two hit is one is uh, just around the needle uh, by the excitation of the ions. We call it uh, friction energy. Another energy is. Uh, transmitted uh, by distance to adjacent dire tissue we call the conduction so just stay there for a while and then make sure that uh, heat is generated uh, and then transmitted enough you know to burn the adjacent you know, dire of the tissue if you pull too early you will miss that the conduction can you stop please yeah. I'm pulling that and then then I move to uh, another unit or section uh, the, and we call it moving shot technique. Now I see the movement to my needle there, insulation portion, and then uh, radioactive tip and then tip of after waiting 30 seconds a minute you give up otherwise just wait it'll be thrombosed and you cannot see no more flow uh, into the vein that means vein is a thrombosed intratumoral um, stop here please as you see now the impedance picked up 300 400 that means you are treating the same area